Please show me that kill. I just need to see that. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Get ready. Get ready. Oh! <laughs> I knew this was a good idea. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. What's up, guys? Um... Just spur of the moment, I came home and I said to myself, you know what, it's Friday the 13th. How often do you get Friday the 13th? Once, maybe twice a year. And years ago, I did Friday parts one, two, and three on a D-Watch. So, you know what, I, if anything, I just wanted to watch four, five, and six tonight. I'm gonna do a triple feature. Got the house to myself. And uh, yeah, I got some tacos here from Tijuana Flats. Oh my God, I love their tacos. Um, I love part four. Part four is not only my favorite Friday movie, but probably one of my favorite slasher movies of all time. Thanks to Mr. Joseph Zito. God bless you, good sir. Man, he can make a good, that, that guy can make a good fucking slasher. Yeah, here's the, uh, I just got home from work and uh, here's the box set. Let me get you guys some light here. This is the first time I've played anything off of this box set. You know, I have, uh, I have the 10, I'll, I'll go up there and I'll show you guys a little later, the uh, the other, all my Friday box sets I have. Yeah, I'm a, guys, I'm a fucking Friday fan and a half, okay? Serious. Um, got my Friday shirt on. We're gonna do it, I got my paint on my arm. Cause you know, I'm, I'm a hard worker, right? I, I, uh, I do some painting. And uh, you know what, you gotta, you gotta work hard for the money. That's what uh, Donna Summer says. This is so, we're gonna get in introduced to Axel. One of my all-time favorite characters in Friday. They could have done, what if they did this whole movie in the hospital? Would that have been cool, guys? If they did this whole movie in the hospital? I would have watched it. Can you, can you imagine that? Can you imagine like Jason just going around cooking fools in a hospital? I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. I think that'd be pretty damn cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be turning the camera on, vlogging this stuff, and uh, yeah. So Friday the 13th, parts four, five, and six, D-Watch. We're doing this, all right? Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. He's about to put it in the old computer, but I didn't, I never realized, I never realized that Jimmy broke up with Betty. I always thought that Betty dumped Jimmy. So he's saying like he treated her right and she, she, uh, she would return his calls and then she wouldn't return his calls. Yeah, he said he says the dead fuck line. The dead fuck. But why would he dump Betty? That's what I don't understand. You know? I mean, I know I'm like digging a little bit too deep into this, but this looks great, by the way, too. The the transfer. This transfer looks because I think all these were like scanned in 4K, but it looks amazing. It really does. But Jimmy and Ted are two of my favorite characters. Like. I just, you just missed it. He said, he said God, I'm horny. <laughs> that pretty much sums up your characters in a Friday the 13th movie. God, I'm horny. That poor lady with the banana. <laughs> man, I tell you, the kills are brutal in 4. Like, man, jo I, maybe that's just because of Joseph Zito. Like, he likes really brutal. Like, he says, if, I'm, if you ask me to make a slasher, then I'm going to give you a fucking slasher, okay? And then you get this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't really get those kills these days, you know? By the way, I'm eating my Tijuana flat, so what I do is I get the refried beans and rice, and I mix, I mix them together, and then I take the chip, and I use it as a spoon, and then I eat, it's like that. It's functional. And it's delicious. See, this scene with um, Corey Feldman peeking uh, across the way through the window at the teenager. Okay. I, that's how I was, you know. Corey, I mean, just, I think any 12-year-old kid, when you get the chance to peek in a, in a window at a fully grown, beautiful woman, you know, it's, it's hormones, it's puberty. It's, I mean, he's right at the cusp of puberty right now. So, you know, and, and I think Corey Feldman's reaction in this scene 
is dead on. Like that's exactly what I probably would have done at that age, you know, because it's like, that's not something you get to see every day. And it, Friday the 13th, right? That's a big part of the formula. <laughs> Here, they're the twins. Uh, Count them, one, two. Yep. Uh, around here. I think as far as the ladies go, part four's probably got the best. I mean, I, you got Trish, you got the two twins. I'm going back to um, You got Ju Julie Aronson. You know, just chock full, right guys? Let me know if I'm wrong down in the comments, okay? Right here, count them, one, two. I love this. Okay, here we go. It's good. I just did the um, my favorite musical moments in horror on my last DD Live, and of course, this was on there. I mean, you got uh, <laughs> you got to have it on there. <laughs> Look at that fucking move, man. Anymore. Just another reason why four is so good. It's so good. It's so good. There's nothing like. Friday the 13th part four, nothing. So I'm sure most of you know this story of uh, Julie Aronson and uh, the, the raft. I mean, you can, look at that. You can see the steam off the water. You can see how cold it is there. But, uh, you know, they, they've stated that it was like, you know, she was like near hypothermia. That's how cold it was in there. And, you know, she almost froze to death and they couldn't get, you know, they, sometimes these shots, you know, they take, they can take a long, long time. You know, you could spend, like for just, just that one shot, you could probably spend, you know, all night out there because you have to get, you know, all your, all your takes. A lot of times when you have 10 other things in, in your brain, like Joseph Zito did, sometimes safety can slip and he probably wasn't thinking th this, this actress is in trouble. She could freeze to death if she's stuck in here. So it was one of those situations where like Ted White had to even step in and say, hey, you either get her out of there or I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk. So, which is pretty brave of Ted White, but I mean, hey, well, I mean, can you imagine, like what if she actually froze to death? That'd be pretty crazy, so. Yeah, movie making, you know, I've, I've been on movie sets before and it's, it's a stressful environment sometimes, you know, especially when the clock's ticking uh, you got to get a shot done before a scene done before the sun comes up and uh, you know 20 degrees not not a fun environment to be in it, it's fun to watch it now you know to watch this stuff now but shooting it is a different thing so while Paul's about to get a, um, a staff up his groin which is an awesome kill let's take a look at this real quick oh hold on here we go <laughs> Jesus, um, man, this box set, you know, I thought it would be tough to top what they did with the Halloween box set, but man, this did it. Like this is amazing. And, and getting an actual 3D version of three over there, uh, 4K scans, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong guys in the comments of every movie, Jason goes to hell. Um, you get the unrated version. I think you get the theatrical version too, but you know, famous for that, that tent scene, you know, that's a, that's a great scene. Um, yeah, I mean, just, just kind of eyeballing this and seeing what other goodies are in here. But I mean, it's just nice to have this, this artwork, you know, beautiful artwork. And it's just a beautiful set. It really is. I mean, is it, can you still buy this or is it out of print? It might be, I don't know. Man, I love Friday the 13th. You know, I love the movies, I love the day, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. One thing I notice about um, just about every Friday movie is the ultimate goal for every teenager in said movie is to get laid. Uh, this, the, the scene where the, uh, I can't remember their freaking names, um, the, the guy that's getting, getting the shower, and then Jason comes up there and like mangles his face up against the uh, the, the shower wall. Th those like every single character. The sole purpose of being there is just to get laid, and that's what's great about Fridays. You don't need to go any further than that. You know, you just you just have a simple premise 
teenagers in a uh, uh, a cabin and they just want to get laid Anybody that's it know? and they're just in the wrong place and jason kills them great stuff great stuff having a blast though uh this one we're we're i think we're getting close to the final act one thing i noticed is that it seems like it takes a good while like the, like jason kills axel at the beginning and uh the nurse and then there's a good little gap i guess the banana lady but you do have a nice space there where Jason, maybe I don't know if he's taking his time or something like that, but uh, then he just starts boom, 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 knocking them off, knocking them off. But in between that time, you're never bored because you're just enjoying watching these teenagers hook up. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're not bashful in the 80s. You, they're not trying to sugarcoat anything. This is what it is. You know, this is what kids want. Young teenagers, they want to see hookups on in the, you know, and this brings me right back to my childhood. This is what I wanted to see on the TV. This is why we love slashers so much, you know? No bones about it. They always had this like one scene in the older movies where you'd see these newspaper clippings of Jason, you know, his body and all that stuff. It's also interesting that like two, three, and four, let's see, two, three, and four don't take place. Two takes place on Friday the 13th. Three takes place on Saturday the 14th, I think. And this one takes place on Sunday the 15th. So this movie should have been called Sunday the 15th. Right guys, am I right? I think so. What if they did that? What if they just, uh, every sequel, the first one was Friday the 13th, the second one was Saturday the 14th, and so on? That'd be kind of a unique idea, right? Yeah. Levi, just hanging there. Hey buddy, you having a good time? You like watching Friday the 13th? It's good times. Levi just got a haircut. He looks cute, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a good little boy. He still acts like a puppy, too. Corey Feldman. Man, Corey Feldman was such a natural actor back then. He never gets laid the whole movie, you know? I also... Yeah, oh, there's a steamy scene. Um, the the scene where Ted gets killed, um, it's... You notice how, like, it's a really quick cut? What if Jason, like, attacked both of them while they were in there? At least, At least Jason was nice enough to let them have a good time with each other, do their business. So definitely gonna, you know, if I'm doing three movies tonight, um, ignore the messiness of my pantry, but I buy these by the case, you know, because you, I think you pay like a little over, maybe a dollar 30 per monster if you buy them by the case. So, and usually my Alexa, she'll tell me, like she'll pull up the monster on there and say, hey, aren't you, aren't you, uh, isn't it time to buy a monster, a case of monster? So Alexa always hooks me up, you know, Alexa, Alexa wants me to die of a heart attack pretty much. So I'm going to throw that in there because I don't think I have another one in here, you know, or maybe, maybe I'll throw it in the uh, freezer and uh, look at that. What is it? Wait, hold on. Peanut butter park. Yeah. Peanut butter park. Um, do you, do you put your, your pop tarts in the freezer? You should. You should. I'm gonna go out back real quick. For some reason, it would look you can. Oh, it's raining. It's actually raining out there. But my uh, my garage door has been just like randomly opening. I don't know what's going on. Those guys keep me safe at all times. They stand watch. Okay. Yeah. Garage door is closed. That's good. There's my drums. Uh, that's my son's drum set. That's my drum set. So. One day these drums are going to go back up because I got all this space in here. Every time you move, guys, you end up not boxing or not unboxing some of your stuff. You know, you start realizing, do I really need to unbox this? If I really need it, I'll, I'll unbox it. But I, I moved here uh, six months ago now to Orlando and I still haven't unboxed a lot of this stuff. Now, some of this stuff is like my action figures right there so i got boxes and boxes of action figures here look, look at that there's a black costume superman um we got a, a red hulk in here yeah there's red hulk i used to have these like hanging up um like if you look at some of the old drum drums videos you might have seen one of these hanging on a wall um but yeah i'm always changing things up there's that those will go out around uh halloween time there's a uh, some of my wife's paintings. 
Man, I really, really, really freaking love Trish. Like every time I watch this, I'm reminded of how great of a final girl she really is. And she never gets the credit because she's buried in this ultimate slasher movie that is part four that has so much going for it. So it's easy to, to have one aspect of this film kind of get drowned out. But I mean, just set all that aside and look at Trish's uh, performance in this, you know? Look at her as a final girl. She's so good. She's so good and she's fighting for Tommy tooth and nail. I mean, this is a big reason why I think I like Rachel and Jamie from Halloween 4 is because I don't know, I like it when you have a um, two like siblings or you know, just two younger people working together, an older fighting for the younger. I, I, I think there's something to that. It's, it's, I think it's cooler when it's that than just one person. And like, he just rips <laughs> Ted the man. Ted White, guys, my favorite, favorite Jason by far. Let me know your favorite Jason down in the comments. But man, I'm, I will die a Ted White guy. That's what's gonna be on my tombstone. Lee McCoy, Ted White guy. In, uh, that's gonna be my, that's gonna be on my tombstone. Oh my God, he just threw it through the window. Fuck, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, he got a freaking spike right through the head. It's on now, guys. It's on. And uh, after after this one, we're going to do a special. This is something I've never done in a D-Watch before. We're going to have a reaction to a brand new fan film. My special boy, James Graham and them, they put together this fan film. And we're gonna react to that trail. I think I said that earlier. I'll cut, well, I'll cut that one out. I'll use this one. So, yeah. But this will be exciting though. This will be really cool. One of the most iconic scenes in the entire franchise. And the work of Tom Salvini, I mean, just second to none. Top freaking notch on this. And Jason's face scared me before anything else. Before Michael Myers, Jason's face right there scared the holy living shit out of me. And stu guys, stuff like that, we just, we don't see it that often, you know? Not to that level. But what, I mean, you know, people, they, they frown and they, they put down horror films, but the talent, the talent that goes behind this stuff to put a scene together that's so exhilarating and you know, you get some kind of emotion out of it. People take it for granted, right guys? Because I just watched the Firestarter remake yesterday and I was just pissed off after it because I felt nothing, nothing. The, I, I feel something with that. I don't care what genre it is. They did something there to make you really feel for Trish and Tommy, you know? So when Tommy flips out and goes ape shit, it, Sends a chill. It scares the fuck out of you. When I first saw this, it scared the fuck out of me. And um, I saw it on VHS. I rented this on VHS. I remember seeing the VHS. We'll go up there and see it here soon. Um, with I, this might be my favorite VHS cover actually. With uh, Jason's mask and it just says the final chapter. Man, great stuff. But uh, yeah, we're closing off the final chapter here. We're gonna do the reaction here in a minute. And then we're gonna move on to five. Uh, it's time to do a trailer reaction for my special boy. Um, we're all excited for this. Because uh, the, the, the last trailer looked really cool. James um, is a, uh, a mask maker too. He makes some amazing freaking like Halloween masks, Friday the 13th masks. But I mean, there's so much talent out there, guys. So much talent. Um, Carrie's Horror of Corner. If you're looking for a really quality Jason mask on Instagram, Carrie's uh, uh, Horror Corner. Uh, I'll, I'll put a little Instagram thing here for her too. She she makes amazing freaking Jason masks. I have one up there. And go. You guys seriously have no idea how much this means to my family and I that we are reopening this camp. Right? I feel like we've been preparing for this for a long time and now here I am standing in front of all of you. I honestly believe that we have a great group of counselors, and if there's one thing I can say, is that this summer is going to be something truly special. So this place is reopening. Word travels fast about what you guys are doing up here. Some folks don't like it. 
I like that cinematography. I know that things haven't been the same around here since all that went down. But I'm hoping that this can be the fresh start that everybody needs. Does April know? What was I supposed to tell her? Huh? That a young kid drowned here when we were kids? That year after year, counselors went missing for no apparent reason? I couldn't tell her that. And what did you tell her? Good acting! Derek, all those kids, year after fucking year! Oh, that's the reason! Oh, second! He's the reason this place closed. I have to stop him before it's too late. It probably already is. Man, that looks really, really fucking good. October 28th of this year. Dude, that, that looks good. Oh my God, James, you, you and your team should be proud of yourself. That trailer looks exciting as hell. Um, the acting looks really good too, by the way. So, yeah, I just, you know what? Give me Jason action, uh, killing. It looks like that trailer has all that. So I'm totally down, I'm totally down. I'm excited for you and your team. Congratulations on putting together this film. You're probably still in the midst of it, but uh, it looks like it's gonna be freaking amazing. Even Levi thinks it's gonna be amazing. Part five, here we go guys, part five. Got it on the little spindle here. Uh, let's see, part five, a new beginning. You know, this one's really been getting a cult following over the past few years. And I can see why, because you know what? It, it stays true to the, the traditions of Friday the 13th, what makes a good Friday the 13th movie, and this, this does it. And I like that it kind of steps outside the box and uh, does its own thing, has its own killer. And the, the characters are, are really crazy. You know, they're, they're literally in the nut house. So there's a lot of fun with this movie for sure. So let's throw it on. I'm actually really excited about this one. On to part five. And uh, let's hit the play button. This is the menu for the, the new uh, Shout Factory releases. You, you'll never see a crisper, clear picture for a Friday the 13th movie, okay? It's starting to get dark. You can see that. It's starting to get a little dark. We are going to do some Twitter shout outs. I posted on Twitter. Let me know what movies you guys are watching. So we'll do that too along the way. We're having fun with guys, right? We're having a lot of fun. Same vibe as part four. You know, you got Corey Feldman there, which they shot this in Corey Feldman's backyard. This is all that he could shoot, just this one little scene. What's interesting about five is that it starts kind of the same way as six. You know, with the rain and everything and these two idiots digging Jason up. Of course, in this movie, it's a dream, but yeah, it's like literally the same intro. So it's cool because you can technically say that Jason, and you can tell by that walk right there that that's Tom Morgan. So Tom Morgan played Jason technically in this movie as well as Roy. But I mean, Tom Morgan has a signature walk and now that's it right there. You know, you can see it's in the legs. He has a certain stride. But man, that's a, that's a, the mask looks a little bit big on him. So not my favorite mask, but you know, you get the, uh, the red, the, the little red insignia on the top above the eyes. Whereas uh, Roy, I'm glad that they made it blue. So that way you can differentiate, I guess. And then he's going to wake up. There you go. And you know, I'm, I'm going to be flat out honest with you guys. I always forget this guy's name. You know, I always remember Corey Feldman. I always remember Tom Matthews. And, you know, this guy, he, and I'll look it up here in a minute, but this guy, he um, is a major part of this movie. He stood out the whole movie, but for some reason, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's his performance. I don't know if it's just how zany this movie is, or maybe that it just has a different killer, or it has probably the most kills out of any Friday movie, but he just kind of gets lost in the mix, I guess, and I never can really remember the guy, you know? This is it. <laughs> I love Ethel so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, Pinehurst. You mark my words. The next little bastard. I like all the characters in Pinehurst. They're funny. You hear me? 
They're a little bit left of center. You know, they're correct. Like, if you if you compare this to the characters in 4, I'm glad that they went a different route because all these characters are completely different than the characters in 4. The only common denominator is they're horny, okay? But they're horny and crazy, all right? Part 5 should have been called Friday the 13th Part 5, Horny and Crazy. Okay, we are in the evil lair. Um, it's time to scope out Jason. It's it's where's Jason? It's not where's Waldo, okay? We have some Jason goodness in here. Uh, let's see. If we scan across here, if you look behind the Drum Dums Funko, yes, that is a Drum Dums Funko. My wife actually made that. Um, there's Jason. Right there. I got a few Jason Funkos. One of them is a Chase variant. That's it right there. Limited edition. It glows in the dark. So if we uh, move the Drum Dumbs Funko out of the way, then you get all that Jason goodness sent to me by some neat uh, parts. One, two, three. I mean, pretty much all of them to J Freddy versus Jason. How cool is that? Some neat. You've outdone yourself, good sir. God bless you, man. And uh, yeah, there's... There's the final chapter right there. I was talking about that earlier. If I come around here, we can look at that cover maybe? No, that's the back. There's the cover of the final chapter. That's gorgeous. That's freaking gorgeous. If we come down here, look at that. We got Jason right there. Uh, a little stuffed, a little plushy. Uh, there's Michael Myers. Uh, I got a scream one right there. Yeah. Black Christmas. Some neat. Thank you again. Um, Terminator. I love VHS, guys. Here's, I don't really have the, I used, remember I used to have my Halloween collection on display for VHS? So if I move these, there's the Halloween movies on VHS. So I need to like maybe rearrange here and, and have those more prominently on display. Um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street box set, VHS box set, some neat again. Thank you so much, good sir. Um, now, all right, so this tin right here, I got that and I will never ever sell this uh, because it is signed by Kane Hodder, not once, but twice. He signed it twice for me. He was an absolute gentleman and a scholar and a very, very kind man and I really had a great time. Matter of fact, there's another signed mask by Kane Hodder right there. Look at that Jason mask. It's gorgeous. But I was talking about Carrie's Corner of Horror. And right there. Look at that. Look at that mask. That's beautiful. I got a few Jason masks. But I like how she's got, like, you can see the blood. Like, she custom puts the blood and all that on there. That doesn't come like that. She spends her hard-earned time, you know, slaving over this stuff to make it look like that. Quick peek at the Myers masks. Dave Vanderhoff. Sent me that one and this one, part four, over there. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, another Jason mask. I mean, we can keep going, guys. I got tons of Jason stuff up here. Love my evil lair. Love my evil lair. And I would say a lot of this stuff is stuff that you guys sent me. I would probably say most of this stuff is stuff that you guys sent me. So thank you, guys. I mean, you Drum Dums isn't me. Like, I'm Lee. But Drum Dums is us. We are all Drum Dums. You know what I mean? W without you guys, there would be no Drum Dums. So, thank you for that. I love you guys to death. Seriously. There's my uh, my Blu-ray shelf. These are all horror. You know? You'll see a lot of my... Uh, let me turn this light on here. Yeah. And I do need to, I do need to clean it up. I'm going to admit. But yeah, that, my box sets like I spit on your grave. Uh, shelf factories. Uh, more special editions, whatnot. Your arrow, some arrows up here. Uh, just, you know, random stuff. Halloween 2 and 3. A lot of Halloween. I mean, look at all that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Halloween steelbooks right there. Halloween box set. You know, so you guys always ask me, can you do a, like a horror collection video? But man, it would take me forever to go through all these. Guys, it's crazy. And I just don't have the time. So I try to slip stuff like this in uh you know these like d watches so i can at least give you some of it you know x-ray schizoid house on sorority row man all this good stuff and uh this is the first legit 
Michael Myers mask I ever got, and it's it's a special place in my heart. It's my favorite mask, and look at that, guys. Look how fucking awesome that looks. Halloween 6, George P. Wilbur, you beautiful son of a bitch. I love you so much. I love you so much. Yeah, a little bit of mood lighting. See, lighting, you see how important lighting is on a Halloween mask? You, got, the, you see how scary that is now? Because I just turned the light down a little bit. You know, it's just a beautiful mask. And I love it to death. I love it to death. So, yeah. Uh, my vinyls. Beth's been telling me I need to do a vinyl collection video. Um, because I got a lot of vinyls in there now. Heading back down, let's see where we are with, uh, oh, Levi. Hey, buddy. See, Levi, I have to literally pick him up. Let's pick him up. Yeah, buddy, I got you. And then, so now you're getting Levi vision. You're getting his point of view. Like, there's the back of his head. And we're going down the stairs. And then uh, there's part five. And I like that it's starting to get dark down here. Right, guys? Yep. There's Deborah Voorhees. What is it, son? Can I go Love you, Deborah. Deborah is a dear, dear friend of mine. You know? Um, it's been... It's been a blessing getting to meet her and uh, becoming such good friends with her. She's she's salt of the earth. She's like the sweetest person you could ever meet. I love her to death. So it's weird when I see Deborah on my freaking TV now because we're we're so we're like deep friends, you know. So yeah, it's so cool. Reggie the Reckless. One of my favorite kills. I mean, that's pretty damn creative to put a belt around a tree. And tighten it around the guy's head. Oh, got to be painful. Let's get this show on the road. But that was probably one of the most famous like love scenes out of the entire franchise. Of course, with Deborah Voorhees and uh, the other guy, famous hedge clippers, hedge trimmers. Pam is um, she's probably low on the totem pole as far as final girls go. I don't know what it is, but she just didn't have that. I guess it factor, the final girl it factor that the Friday franchise is so well known for. So I don't know what it was. You know, I like I don't I don't dislike Pam. But she just I guess she just didn't really make a mark. I guess that's all that is to it. But she doesn't like hurt the movie or anything, you know? So I was asking uh, on Facebook, uh, what is everybody watching for Friday the thirteenth and Instagram and Twitter, you know. Everybody's watching Friday today. Shout out to Jill Ellis who told me she's watching four, five, and six. So that's what I'm watching, four, five, and six. So I told, I was like, Jill, you're getting a shout out because how many of you guys are doing the Jarvis trilogy? And the reason I'm doing the Jarvis trilogy is because I did one through three the last time I did a marathon. So I wanted to do the Jarvis trilogy, which is this. This is the best three movies of the franchise. Let's face it, okay? And hey, that's a tall order because one through three are rock freaking solid too. Yeah, I would. You know what, I would say one to three is almost dead even with four to six, you know? Because you have some hills and valleys in both. But, I don't know, I mean, I guess there is the debate to be had. Like, which one is the better trilogy? I might have to post that. Tommy has a few blowouts in this movie. That was a freaking weird ass kick. Did you guys notice that? Harry... Manfredini, you got to give it up for his scores in these. Um, doesn't he do the scores for all the way up to at least seven, maybe eight? I can't remember if there's any Harry Manfredini in part eight. Let me know in the comments, guys. Um, I'm giving you guys a lot of homework assignments in the comments. I so I'm sorry, but yeah, I mean, Harry Manfredini's score is just as important as the movies themselves, as Jason Voorhees, you know? And I think that's what's missing from the franchise now. Well, actually, movies are missing from the franchise now. But when they were happening, Harry Manfredini's score, you know, if it, was, if it wasn't there, you definitely noticed it. It's enchilada time, guys. Have you guys seen that remix that's on freaking uh, YouTube? Now, I don't think he scored with the, the lady friend. And then he's going to go take a steaming crap in an outhouse. And then she's going to, like, serenade him. Like, you could dissect this scene for a freaking days. It's just strange. 
Like when they were right, like, <laughs> like I don't know what the, like it, it's crazy. He's literally taking her crap, and he just picked her up. Oh, lighten up, demon. You'll feel a lot better after you shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Like I don't think you would see that in horror movies today. You know, like Friday is the only franchise that could get away with that. I guess. Here we go. Baby, ooh, ba but it's charming. There's something charming about it. I can't put my finger on it. Just in case you forgot, he's literally taking a shit right now. Okay, let's do a comparison <laughs> because uh, I always, everybody talks about the Crispin Glover dance, but this dance from part five is equally strange. I mean, what the fuck is that? It's just really weird. I mean, she's got talent. You know, it's like one of those, remember back in the 80s with the break dancing, they'd do the pop and the lock? So, but her pop and lock is a little bit different than like the, the normal pop and lock that you would see, you know? Cause the arms, she's like throwing the arms around. And stuff. It's weird. But it's, I like this scene, you know, it's colorful, it's memorable, and uh, she's about to get killed. And one observation about the kills in this movie, just about all of them are off screen. That's one thing I, I notice about this movie, they're cutaways, and they'll show the aftermath, so you get the blood, but very few of them, you actually see the, the, uh, the weapon go into the body. Now, let's see if this one does actually go in the body. Okay, that one does go in, okay. But there's a lot of them, they're kind of like just cutaways and you see the aftermath. So, yeah. But I wanted to talk about that dance for sure. That's a really, really weird dance. Now, we got a pretty good chase in part five. People don't talk about the, the final chase. You know, it's in the rain. You got Melanie Kinnaman running. You got the wet, wet shirt, t-shirt. Not, not, you know, not too bad, right? Having, having a good time? She's, look at her, she's giving it her all. So, yeah, I can't, I can't knock Melanie Kinnaman. Uh, it's kind of weird though that she's, you know, you, I mean, you can clearly see through her shirt and she's with Reggie. Steinman, is it Joel Steinman? Why am I, Joe Steinman? I can't, guys, again, get in the comments, let me know. Cause I'm not looking this shit up, but uh, Steinman, yeah, he passed away, he was a, um, I know he did some softcore porn, maybe some hardcore porn, before he did Friday. So he was not afraid to ask an actress to um, maybe lose her top or go, you know, wet t-shirt in the rain. Now, one one observation I did notice is that Tom Morga does have a little bit of a Richard Brooker walk to him. I might have to put freaking copyright filters over this. I hope not. I don't know. It's such a, such a pain when I do. Yeah, here comes uh, Reggie driving a fucking forklift. Classic shot. Gonna save the day. That almost had a little bit of an action adventure music cue right there. Was did um, Harry Manfredini say? You know what? Uh, aside from my Jason music, I'm gonna throw in a little. Dun, 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 dun. Superman theme or something like that in there or Indiana Jones So that's all you get you get one little cue For a second there. I thought Tommy shoved the knife in his groin in Roy's groin But I think it was just in the leg. I guess quick observations as we're um, wrapping up part five here um, It's fun. I'm enjoying it Four is definitely much better than five, but the characters are so eccentric in five that they keep your interest along the way, which is nice. Um, I like Roy as Jason. You know, it's just a nice, I think five was a necessary movie, you know? I mean, but you could, li you could watch four and six and you could completely skip five if you wanted to. I mean, hell, Tommy Jarvis looks kind of the same age in six as he does five. So I'm wondering if when they shot six, were they kind of just retconning five in their mind and saying, hey, this is actually a sequel to four? 
Who knows? I don't know. And one one other observation about Melanie Kinnaman. Um, now I, you know, after if you've seen Crystal Lake Memories, um, I guess she was kind of a, a diva, a quote unquote diva on set. She was kind of difficult to work with, and maybe sometimes that stuff can kind of show itself in the performance, and maybe that's what what happened. I don't know, but. Uh, you know, as a movie itself, I didn't mind Melanie Kinnaman as a final girl. You know, she's not too bad. I mean, look, look, look at her there. She's she's fighting for Reggie. You know, she's giving it her all. She's not running away from it. So, I mean, what more could you ask for? Now, this is a great scene, too, because uh, when he falls on those spikes, it's, it looks like the whole scene was completely pre-staged. Oh, shit. And here you go. Yep. <laughs> it just falls flat on there. It's convenient because the mask just pulls itself right up, you know? So you don't have to go down there and pull the mask up. It just... And he's the only killer that has a mask over a mask. You know? So we're, uh, we're moving on to six here. This has been fun. This has been really fun going through these. Yeah, and this is where, uh, see, it's like they set it up for Tommy to be the killer in the next one, in this scene, but then he's not. So, again, it's just another reason why I think they might have retconned five and six. So, as we close out part five, I did pull out two NECA figures, and they're both part five. I didn't even realize this. So, there's the part five Jason, and here's the part five Roy. Pretty cool. Jason Roy. I like the detail. Look at that detail. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Five is done. Do you know what time it is? It's time to watch one of the most beloved movies in the franchise. Some people say their favorite movie in the franchise. I prefer part four, but I understand because this movie is really, really fucking amazing. Okay. It's a trendsetter. It's one of the first of its kind, very self-aware. And uh, you know what? It gave the franchise the swift kick in the ass that it needed. And it has one of the coolest opening sequences. And look at that cover, guys. I mean, probably one of the most striking covers out of all the movies. Part six, Jason Lives. The shot of adrenaline that the franchise needed we're throwing it in. So in uh, part five and part six, they use references to part four when you have that little audio bite of Corey Feldman going, die, die, Tommy! Even though five is probably not in continuity. Oh, shit. Jason looks like he weighs about five pounds. Just by the way his body's moving when he uh, stabs him. Talk about Starting the movie off with a bang, uh, you know, Frankenstein style, and uh, it never lets up. You know, it, it, it never lets up on the fun. This movie is so damn fun. So if you're looking for just the, like the gnarly kill with great characters, Jason, then you go with part four. If you're looking for the just fun popcorn Jason movie, you go with part six. I think that's what it comes down to. I think it just comes down to your mood, but man, I think visually this one's a little bit better too. Like, I love this shot right here. This is, this is probably the best part of the movie. Even though the whole movie's great, but man, that's iconic right there. That's iconic. CJ Graham. Arguably one of the best Jasons of the bunch, just in so many ways. Physically, he looks great, you know. He's got a good walk. This was an exciting time, too, you know, because Jason was back. I remember, you know, I was a teenager at the time, and I remember I was like, damn, I miss Jason. You know, even though between this one and four, it's like two years, because these movies came out like every year, but it felt longer, you know. You like, you really wanted Jason to come back. And man, he comes back in such a big way. He's like literally resurrected from the dead. How cool is that? So, you know, that whole term, 
Zombie Jason, boom, there you go right there. He is a zombie, pretty much. Freddy wasn't brought back from the, I guess he kind of was. He was pissed on and brought back from the dead, but I mean, this true, literal, brought back from the dead, a grave? Yeah, Jason, Michael Myers was never brought back from the dead like that. Look at that. He looks so freaking badass there. Like they got the look down, the maggots, the rain. That's what you want Jason to look like. He looks scary as fuck there, actually. I mean, and there you go. Punches a hole right through his fucking chest. Hell yeah. You know, people always say that Jason lives is tame because there's no nudity, but they make up for it uh, in just the brutality of some of the kills. Because you didn't get any, you didn't get a punch through the chest in part five, you know? You got a bunch of cutaways. And here you go. Wow, this shot. So damn iconic. Look at that. The man. That is one of the best sequences of Jason right there in the franchise. James Bond, ooh yeah. So, Tom Matthews. This Tommy Jarvis, he's crazy, but he's functional crazy. You know? He's trying to get shit done in this movie. Whereas Tommy Jarvis in part five, he's just crazy. He could snap at a moment's notice. He's not trying to get anything done. This is a Tommy Jarvis on a mission. That's why this Tommy Jarvis works so well. You know? Tom Matthews is charismatic as fuck, too. I mean, he really just owns this role. And he brought new life to the character of Tommy Jarvis. You, know, you, could, also, you could look at them as like the adult Tommy Jarvis and the, the, uh, the kid Tommy Jarvis because they're really they're two very, very different characters. And let's face it, when I was a freaking 12-year-old kid, I'm pretty sure I'm quite different now than I was when I was 12. So you don't want him to copy what he did when he was you know, 11, 12 years old, right? No. So, oh my God, there's uh, Tony Goldwyn. And there's uh, McLaugh uh, Tom McLaughlin's wife. Yeah, you got you got her in the movie. You know, you don't always get sexual tension, but Megan and Tommy Jarvis definitely had sexual attention. I don't know if it was the acting, or I don't know if it was the actual actors themselves were into each other, but. She did a damn good job. She really did a damn good job of selling that chemistry. So, big props, big props to Megan. All right, so let's do these, uh, the Twitter shout outs real quick. Yeah, there we go. So I gotta look, 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 I can spin you guys around. It's like that. There you go, okay. Cause I said, having a, a Friday the 13th marathon, I will shout you out. If you tell me what you're watching, quite a few responses here too. So we got uh, the Boogeyman watching part one right now, AMC TV, Ray Malibur, final chapter, Nick Acosta watching the final chapter, uh, Batman, let me turn this down a little bit. Batman says, let's go. I'm probably uh, going to watch two, four, six, maybe Freddy versus Jason, I don't know. Loki watched eight, seven, five casually in the background last week. Hope you're doing the video, you're the GOAT. Thank you, man, I appreciate that, Batman. Um, Ali Goon says, just watch two to four, going to watch five, seven, and eight next. Went all the way, skip six, because I've watched that so many times. Yeah, that's, I'm watching it right now. Uh, James Shannon Morant says, the brand new box set, nicely, parts one, parts two, and three and four. Troy, what's up, brother? Troy Jr., he says, me, two bud, I'm having myself a Friday the 13th marathon. Victoria Rasmussen, Victoria, she says, part two. Uh, Chris Glavin says, I would, uh, I would watch tonight, but I'm at Disney World. Hey, enjoy Disney World, Chris. Enjoy Disney World. Uh, Tyler says he's watching my three favorites with the We Watched a Movie commentary. That's cool. That's awesome. We Watched a Movie response. Says, hell yeah, dude. Uh, Andrew Dick says, watch parts one and two this morning before work. Kimmy says, uh, me and my best friend started this afternoon with parts two, three, four, and finishing right uh, Fish in the Night with part six and seven, my favorite, and the remake. Man, it's a uh, Lacey Lou. She was telling me on Facebook she's been watching them all day. She's going to, she's like, like right now, she's on some of the rough ones. She says she's on like Jason Goes to Hell and X. So, 
Big props to you guys that, that, like, let me know in the comments if you guys managed to do the entire run all day. I would be highly impressed. Uh, John Smith, 606, says, I probably watched uh, one, through, one through three tonight. The rest are all pretty much terrible, in my opinion. Stop it. Stop it. Come on. Of course they're terrible. They're fun as fuck, though. Okay. Um... Actually, part four is good thereafter or bad. Yeah, like part four is the best freaking one, John. Jesus. Bernardo Cisneros says a great set. Uh, hope Elm Street get Man, Elm Street needs a box set. It, uh, this camera's literally sitting on top of the box set right now. That's how big it is. I could put a tripod right on top of it. Uh, Happy Horror Time says we're going to, to two different movie theaters tonight. Uh, first to see Friday part four, then part three. Wow, that's awesome. He's, he's definitely abroad. Papa J says, finishing up five, moving on to six. Started with two, going in order. Um, Destiny, she says, just finished part six, starting it last night, but fall asleep. I know Destiny is like really into Joe Bob, uh, as many of you are, and Joe Bob's having a new episode tonight, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are watching uh, Joe Bob. So, uh, Justin, report one to five. Uh, armor till armor. Uh, I've got the box set, but can't watch it as I'm in the wrong zone. Oh, he's, yeah. Get you a region free player. I'm telling you, man. I have one. Best investment I ever made. Scarlet Witch, Obi Wan says, watched Friday the 13th, uh, 2009, the remake today, before I went to work. 80s Hairband Chick says, every Friday the 13th, I watch part three. It's so cheesy, but in a good way. Yeah, part three is so damn fun. I love part three. Um, Greg Dotson says, 34 years ago today was with my best friend at the theater to see part seven on its opening night. We'll be watching that tonight for its anniversary, sadly. My friend is no longer here, so we'll also be watching it. It's on, oh, I'm so sorry about your friend, Greg. So sorry about your friend. And I, I responded to Greg that I saw part seven. That was the first Friday I saw in the theater too. So great memories of part seven, for sure. Hadfield 1981 says, nice fellow Jenny bro, she's the best. Yeah, Jenny from part two. Uh, yeah, Amy Steele's like one of the best final girls ever. And Danny says, I like a lot of blood and violence, so parts four, five, and six, Freddy vs. Jason and the remake. Oh, and definitely the fan films. Yeah, man, the fan films have been knocking it out of the freaking park lately. So, yeah. Thank you, Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. Uh, here, this is like my least favorite part of this movie. I think they should they should have just taken this out. I, I don't. It's too silly, and you know. And this movie has some lighthearted moments in it, but this is just too much. And this is this this takes it down a peg for me. I've never liked the paintball sequence at all. It's just way like right there. It's just just not into it. It's not into it. Okay. If you guys like the paintball sequence, hey, more power to you. But it's not me. Now, who, who the fuck goes out in the woods in the middle of the night? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all about going and, you know, getting lucky, but that's kind of a dangerous area to go to, you know? Just the middle of the woods, lay a blanket down. I think there's safer places to go. And if you're gonna do that, maybe, maybe do it during the day. I don't know. But at night, get a hotel room, maybe go to the beach, go to a nice restaurant. Well, I guess you can't, like, you know, have sex at a restaurant, but yeah, I just, this is probably the dumbest couple I've ever seen, you know? So of course they're going to get, they're going to get it. Jason's going to give it to them. By the way, guys, I have to comment on the picture quality of all these. I don't know if you're seeing it, but the, the blacks are deeper. Man, I tell you this 4k scan, these movies look brand new. They really look brand new. They did such a good job on this. The, the grain is intact. You know, there's no digital noise reduction. At least I don't notice any. But man, Friday the 13th has, like look how black behind Jason, you know? It, Friday the 13th has never looked this good. So I saw somebody on one of the socials too saying that he's, he's afraid, he doesn't want to open it because he's waiting for the 4K. Dude. If you're waiting for the 4Ks of all these movies, you might be waiting a long time. And I know they just announced the first one's getting 4K, but go ahead and rip it. Go ahead and watch. I mean, these look amazing, and I can't imagine the 4K looking that much better. All right? Because these look really great. You know what? I just got an idea. Since we're on the last movie, just to make this fun and interesting, 
I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna put on the VHS on Jolene. So that way we can kind of, you know, catch a little bit of six on VHS. Shout out to my friend Beth, who's like such a big VHS buff. She'll like this, okay? She'll like this, but uh, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go up there right now and I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna put it in, okay? Okay, we're here. Um, I've already set aside part six, VHS. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous with the light flash. Look at that, isn't that cool? The light's flashing it so you see the Jason lives. Like, wouldn't that be cool if that VHS actually did that and it wasn't my flashing light there that's doing it? So let's grab that. And let's turn on the TV. Do you hear that? Boom. Love that sound. And we're going to put it on 3. Oh, 3. Okay. And let's go ahead and we're going to see Jason lives on Jolene. This is like the this is like a retro room from from the future. Yep. And we'll play it right about here. And there we go. One thing about Jolene is she sounds amazing. There's some good bass in there, and it's awesome. But yeah, sometimes I just like coming in here, chilling out. Um, you know, maybe throwing on a VHS because I mean the VHS collection is pretty big, so it's nice. You know, every now and then, this is like my friend Beth says, every now and then it's it's nice to watch just a VHS. Certain movies are better on VHS. So uh, I, the first Halloween I think is great on VHS. Friday the Thirteenth, great on freaking VHS. Okay. It's okay. We're here. Yeah, honey, we're here. So yeah, we will leave that playing. And uh, I'm gonna head back down. Classic, classic freaking scene right here. Alice Cooper. I love this song so much. Listen to that. <laughs> okay, a little, uh, little exchange going on there. So I have it timed, I think I have like a 20 second delay, so we're gonna go test out this theory, okay? So I should be about at this scene when I get upstairs. All right, wherever the red dot goes, you bang. All right, so let's go upstairs. Let's see what we get. Creepy, ooh. There you go. So about, about, about a 30 second. So now you can see the, the VHS compared to the 4K downstairs. Sometimes it's nice to just come and I sit in the chair and I just, you know, I enjoy a nice VHS movie. So you know what's good about this one? The stakes are higher. The, the characters are richer. Like this moment right here with the sheriff. You know, he cares about the kids. He's trying to make sure that they're safe. And this is the only Friday movie that has kids in it. Am I right on that? I think so. So, and, and the kids weren't annoying. They didn't really get in the way. And I think that's because they're only in when they need to be in. And then we got one of the greatest freaking kills ever. <laughs> You can't kill Jason. Yeah, like that's gonna help. You know, but they're not afraid to throw some blood in there either. I mean, look at that. The, the, the room is just freaking engulfed in blood splatter. Jason can walk faster than you can run. This movie proves that. So we're, we're getting down to the, uh, the epic finale. We've, we've done all three movies. I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna have to be editing probably for the next couple hours. Uh, I'd like to get this up on um, a proper Friday the 13th. We shall see. But I, I tell you, I love watching a movie in here. It's really nice. I want him to kill your daddy so bad. Just because of the kill. Now, I don't have anything against your daddy. He's a good guy. I think we're dead meat. 
Isn't there a channel with that name? I'm getting my back cracked. Also, guys, the um, what did Harry Manfredini do the score in this one? Or did they? I'll have to check and see who the composer was for part six. Because part six is where the score started sounding a little bit more updated, synth 80s-ish. See, that's that that's that tongue-in-cheek humor that Tom McLaughlin wanted to inject into this movie, you know? Very self-aware. And this, guys, this is way before Scream, a lot of movies like that. Not, I'm not saying this was the first to do that. Hell, Return of the Living Dead came out before this. And that is a proper comedy horror. Please show me that kill. I just need to see that. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Get ready. Get ready. Oh! <laughs> I knew this was a good idea. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. Uh, so, guys, we're we're closing off the uh, the Friday the 13th Part 4, 5, and 6, the Tommy Jarvis Trilogy Marathon. Right now, you got Tommy Jarvis with the gasoline around the boat. Um... I posted on, and this is the first time I've done this, but I actually posted in the Facebook community, because every now and then I'll do that, like, there's no way I'm going to have time to read all 51 of these, so just just know that I do thank you guys, um, and I'll, I'll probably just put some B-roll here, so that way you guys can see this, but uh, I, re I, I really appreciate all the comments that you guys send me, I don't... I, you know, I might not respond to all of them, but I at least try to give you a heart so, I, so you, you know that I read it. Um, and I definitely, definitely don't take you guys for granted. I appreciate all the support you guys give me. Like I said, drum dumb family, right? So, but yeah, you guys are awesome. But yeah, I'll turn the camera around here. And uh, I mean, this is proper place to wrap it up, right guys? And um, yeah, Friday the 13th Part 6, man, it still holds up very well. It's highly, highly entertaining. Um, and, and I think that's because of, you know, Tom Matthews, Tom the Toms, I guess, Tom McLaughlin. The, um, you know, the tongue-in-cheek nature of this movie. You know, I think all those things just kind of amount to it being timeless. And it's still 30 years later 30 some years later still holds up so well you know great jason he's like like they they fired on all cylinders this is kind of like almost like the dream warriors in terms of quality of uh, the friday franchise you know jason under the water and uh, that's gonna pick I, I i'm i was almost tempted to put in part seven too but i think i need to chop it here at, at the nice tommy jarvis trilogy okay but anyway guys that's gonna do it um, happy Friday the 13th to everybody. I love you guys to death. Take care of each other. Uh, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do FIFA Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. You know, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum Dumb out.